How's it going, everybody? If you'll indulge me, I'd love to ponder something with you, uh, which is essentially just the nature of memory and how that contributes to what emerges as consciousness. So let's begin by considering a single water molecule. In isolation, it's not wet, nor does it possess any fluidity, and only when countless such molecules come together do emergent properties arise. Uh, the capacity to go here, to form drops, and ultimately to flow as liquid water. So once this collective substance exists, it responds to gravity and the contours of the land, and it follows the path of least resistance. Over time, a modest trickle can carve a subtle groove in the soil, and given enough persistence, that groove deepens into a channel, which may grow into a stream, and then a river, and ultimately a canyon etched into the solid rock. A surge of rainfall or melting ice can raise the water level, allowing it to spill into new terrains and form fresh channels. And without such change, the water remains in this well-worn route, reinforcing the path and making it harder to deviate from the established course. The canyon, in this sense, stands as a kind of geological memory, um, a record of countless water molecules persistently taking the same route over time. So this natural phenomena offers a really powerful analogy for the workings of the human brain and consciousness itself. A single neuron firing alone is not a thought and certainly not a memory, but when billions of neurons interact, their collective activity produces emergent mental properties, uh, sensations, ideas, emotions, and eventually consciousness. Through repeated experiences and learning, certain neural circuits become preferential pathways in the brain, uh, reinforced through the process of what's called long-term potentiation. So just as water cuts deeper channels into the land, repeated neural activity carves out stable mental channels, making it easier for certain thoughts to recur. And in this way, our minds come to remember particular ideas, behaviors, and perspectives. Not because these patterns are inevitable, but because they have become the easiest routes for mental activity to follow. So extending this notion to a broader scale, consider that just as innumerable rivulets merge to form rivers and rivers flow into oceans, individual minds may feed into a collective reservoir of thoughts, beliefs, and influences. And from this perspective, what we call the collective unconscious can be seen as a vast conceptual watershed. Across generations, billions of people have confronted the core themes of their existence, birth and death, love and loss, heroism and treachery, and through their struggles, common patterns emerge. Carl Jung identified these universal patterns as what he called archetypes, which are recurring motifs uh, such as the hero, the mother, the wise old man, and the trickster. And we see these like uh, in tarot cards, right? Um, and also across many different um, uh, cultural and religious traditions. So like ancient riverbeds carved into the landscapes of the human psyche, these archetypes channel the flow of our collective imagination. They represent the deep canyons of thought formed by millennia of human experience, guiding our stories, myths, and cultural expressions. In this way, archetypes highlight a continuity between individual and collective levels of mind. They are conceptual channels that ideas flow through repeatedly, giving shape to our sense of meaning. Over the centuries, these archetypes have gained a kind of agency. If you've ever heard somebody say that uh, people don't have ideas, ideas have people. Uh, ideas have agency, and although they are not conscious agents in themselves, their established patterns strongly influence how new ideas emerge, spread, and persist. So much like a canyon directing the flow of water, archetypes uh, direct the flow of thought, giving it familiar contours and guiding cultural development. They become stable structures that help us make sense of new experiences, uh, encouraging certain types of interpretations and discouraging others, and thus reinforcing their own existence over time. So by viewing consciousness, memory, and cultural knowledge through this lens, we see that memory is not limited to the human brain alone. Memory is a universal property manifested in multiple domains. The Earth's landscape hold uh, geological memories of water's passage, while our neural networks retain traces of repeated experiences. And on a grander scale, humanity's shared conceptual terrain, its collective unconscious, bears the imprint of innumerable minds flowing over eons, uh, carving and recarving familiar patterns of meaning. Each domain, 
geological, neural, cultural, illustrates the same fundamental principle that repeated uh, flow of countless discrete elements eventually produces durable patterns, stable channels, and emergent properties. So far from veering into pseudoscience, this analogy is rooted in very observable phenomena. It uses this tangible example of water to illuminate how memories, both personal and collective, form naturally uh, through repeated patterns of interaction. Uh, the interplay of molecules under gravity and geology parallels the interplay of neurons in the brain, and that in turn parallels the interplay of minds in society. And in each case, we see how repetition, uh, paths of least resistance, and the shaping of influences of established channels give rise to stable structures that guide future flows. Uh, be they streams of water, electric impulses of thought, or cultural currents of ideas. So, in, in recognizing these universal patterns, we gain insight into how memory, meaning, and even a sense of agency emerges. And ultimately, it, it binds our individual minds into a larger tapestry of consciousness that spans across time and space. And uh, so this is essentially the nature of memory. It's, it's a very physical property. There's nothing mystical about it. And this is the very thing that gives rise to consciousness. So let me know what you think. I hope this was a fun thought experiment.